اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کمیٹڈ مسلم بردرز سسٹرز اینڈ چلڈرن ان اسلام السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لک ایٹ دا ٹوینٹی نائنتھ اینڈ دا تھرٹیتھ جز آف دا قرآن بیکاز ان شاء اللہ دس منتھ آف رمضان از گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹوینٹی نائن ڈیز فار اس اینڈ سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو look at both these juzes together. Now, juz 29 has uh, 11 surahs, whereas the 30th juz has 37 surahs. And almost all of them, with the exception of one or two in, in the 30th juz, have all been revealed in Makkah. And most of these surahs are short, and their contents are uh, fairly similar. Uh, In the 29th juz, I'm only going to touch upon one or two or three surahs, for instance, Surah Al-Qalam, uh, Surah Al-Mudhambil, and Surah Al-Mudathir, uh, so that we can understand uh, a little bit better. Uh, Al-Qalam is also called Surah Noon. And uh, in this surah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given the most lofty of characters. إِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And of course addressing the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that O Messenger, you have been given the most lofty of characters. And that's why the Quran you know, re- reminds us that uh, we have to uh, follow the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So it's important that we uh, understand uh, what our responsibility is towards the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how we have to Uh, love him and follow him and abide by uh, his uh, sunnah and seerah. Uh, surah Al-Mudhammil and Al-Mudassir, of course, are early Makkan surahs and they relate to the period when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to uh, rise up to recite the Quran for a certain period of the night um, so that, you know, he would be able to imbibe this message and memorize it properly. And then in Surah Al-Mudassir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to uh, rise and warn the people uh, about this message. So this was an indication that now an open declaration has to be made uh, by the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to warn the people, to invite them to Islam. And of course, uh, there are consequences that uh, followed from that First of all, the Makkan Mushriks ridiculed the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then they uh, started to uh, uh, persecute the Muslims. And of course, there was a lot of oppression that the Muslims were subjected to. Ultimately, about a hundred of them fleeing to Abyssinia. And uh, others, uh, the, the, the ones that had remained in Makkah, continued to face persecution until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala opened the way for them to migrate to Medina. So, In the Makkan surahs, once again, uh, we need to understand that uh, the messages that are coming across very, very powerfully are, of course, about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has to do with the ideological struggle that was going on in Makkah. The Makkan mushriks, of course, worshipped idols. And Islam forbids idol worship or forbids shirk or any association of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Makkan surahs emphasize Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. Secondly, that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a prophet of Allah, commissioned by Allah to deliver the message of Allah to humanity. And he's a messenger for all humanity, not just for a particular group of people. And number three, there is going to be a day of reckoning that Muslims have to account for their deeds in this dunya. And of course, in between the Makkan surahs, we also read the stories of earlier prophets and how they were destroyed. Uh, or, or the people of the earlier prophets, how they were destroyed because they were not uh, abiding by the message that was being delivered to them. And this was also a message that was being delivered to the Makkan Mushriks as well, that if you do not abide by what uh, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is conveying to you, you will also be punished. And of course, they were punished. So now that we have come to the end of the Noble Quran, I think we need to briefly recap exactly Uh, what uh, the, the message of the Qur'an has been. First of all, we must understand that the Qur'an as we have in our possession is the way it was arranged in this order by the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, 
that there were surahs that were revealed in Mecca and there were surahs that were revealed in Medina. So the Meccan surahs, as we mentioned, had to do more with an ideological, of an ideological nature, the message that was being delivered because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted humanity to achieve that paradigm shift from a state of jahiliya to a state of Islam. Islam means, of course, surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was the, the, the first requirement that was uh, conveyed in Makkah. The surahs in Medina, of course, have to do with our conduct in society, both at the individual level, at the social level, at the family level, at the community level, at the larger, broader society and state level. All of these injunctions are contained in the Noble Quran, revealed to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and communicated to us by the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is important to keep in mind that, for instance, the Quran expressly forbids uh, rib'a. Rib'a means usury. And I think if we look at the current banking system in the world, we will come to the realization that the banking system is set up in such a way that money is created out of thin air and that uh, money is sucked by the rich people from the poor. Even in today's situation, if we want to pay attention, the, the crisis that the world is facing at the present time, that uh, the trillions of dollars that have been given out, uh, pittance has been given out to ordinary people, and trillions of dollars have been given out to these major corporations so that they can continue to enrich themselves. These are the kinds of things that Islam absolutely forbids. So if you want to encapsulate the message of the Quran after the aspect of Tawheed, that is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message that comes across very, very forcefully is that Islam emphasizes justice in society. It means socio-economic and political justice. Unless and until there, there are these levels of justices in society, a society cannot call itself an Islamic society, no matter what labels people apply on it. And Islam is not just for individual Muslims that they may pray and they may offer their, uh, you know, salat and zakat and, and fast in the month of Ramadan and go for hajj and umrah and they will go to paradise. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do. These are requirements for us. What Allah is saying is that we have to establish justice in society. This is what the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. And he had to suffer tremendous persecution as a consequence. And when he migrated from Makkah to Medina, he established an Islamic state. This is the responsibility of uh, every committed Muslim. And of course, in the Quran, we also get many, many concepts that are clarified. For instance, who is a mu'min, who is a Muslim, who is a munafiq, who is a kafir, who is a mushrik, what is taqwa? And all of these concepts are narrated in a beautiful way, explained in a beautiful way so that we can begin to understand the message of the Quran. And we hope and pray, inshallah, that throughout this Ramadan that all of you have been paying attention because fasting is also related to achieving taqwa. And taqwa, of course, means more than piety. Taqwa means, uh, and, and the word, of course, we had explained earlier, the word is related to uh, the root word waqa or waqaya, which means protection. So when we want to achieve taqwa, uh, we have to be in a situation we are where we are under Allah's protection. And we are under Allah's protection when we are abiding by His commands. And Allah also tells us that this book, in, in, right in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, when He says, that this is a book in which there is no doubt, but it has taqwa only for, uh, it was guidance only for those that have taqwa. And so it's important that we constantly keep these points in mind. And one final point, that the final juz, the 30th juz, ends with two surahs that are referred to as mu'awwizatain, that the two surahs of protection, and we are seeking Allah's protection. So consider this, that we have gone through the whole Quran, Allah's guidance has been provided to us, and right at the end, he again tells us that we seek protection in Allah, from Wiswas, from the Khannas, and from all of these evil forces that exist over there. That ultimately, we can only be safe and secure if we have Allah's protection. And we pray to Allah to provide each and every one of you His protection and His guidance, and that this Ramadan 
would serve as a reminder for us that we become better human beings by abiding by the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hope that you have found these uh, brief commentaries uh, helpful and we urge each and every one of you to please continue to study the Quran. Don't give it up just because the month of Ramadan has ended. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.